It's the Friday of Memorial Day weekend. We got so much to be grateful for in this wonderful country that we live in. Let's kick this weekend off with our season finale, episode 10 of It's Friday in the Sea House. Welcome back everybody to It's Friday in the Sea House. This is our 10th and final episode, certainly of the coronavirus season. There's been a lot of calls from studios and movie companies and news organizations that would like to pick us up for next year. We're holding out. We think Netflix is probably going to be the best option for us to blow this thing up next year. But until we get those big offers in, let's just say thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here with us each week so we can give to you the newest and the latest and the updates that we've got to share from week to week. Now, today's season finale is a, a little bit of a cliffhanger because we don't know exactly what the plans are going to be for coming back to school this fall. We also know it's a little bittersweet because this is when we say goodbye, at least on air, to our seniors. The good part of that is we know we've still got prom and graduation coming up in July. But as we close things out this year, we've got a very special guest today. We've got Dr. Jeff Bearden, who's our superintendent of schools, who's going to come on and kind of give an overview of this time period that we've been through. We also have our outgoing seniors giving advice to all of our incoming Bulldogs next year. So for a lot of you out there who are 8th graders and about to become ninth graders, this may be the first time you're seeing this show. I'm Mitch Young, your soon-to-be principal, and this is It's Friday in the Sea House. I think, you know, I feel like a completely different person now than I was freshman year. So you're going to grow so much. So don't feel like you need to put all this pressure on yourself right at the beginning to like be the best or like follow along with the people that you're around to, and feel pressure to do what they're doing because what you want to do and what is true to you is hardly ever the same as those around you. So I would just take advantage of things you find interesting instead of just doing what everyone else is doing. Because I think I found myself doing that a lot at the very beginning. It's just, oh, everyone else is doing this, so I guess I will too. And now, you know, that's not stuff I'm interested in. And I could have spent time doing stuff I loved. So that's what I'd say. A piece of advice that I would give to a freshman coming in is not being afraid to make mistakes and try things that you actually don't like. That's something I learned freshman year. Um, by doing stuff that I didn't like, I actually got to find out the things I did like and what I was really good at. So like, don't be afraid to make mistakes and do things that make you a little bit uncomfortable because they might have a really like productive and good outcome. So that's some advice I would give. Try your hardest. Um, everything counts, even though you might think it's four years from now. Like every grade, every test, it counts. So try your best because it all adds up. Um, to an incoming freshman, I would say my big piece of advice is to just get involved. It makes a world of a difference. If you can just find something to plug yourself into, whether that's a club, a sport, I don't know what that looks like for you, but it's so, so important to plug yourself in. You find people, you find a support group, and I would just really encourage you to do your best to find a group. Um, have fun, enjoy your time here because it's not gonna last forever. Take it seriously in the beginning and don't stop. Like Yeah! Like, <laughs> like because... literally, if you do bad, you're setting yourself up for failure. Personally, I would give the advice of actually really trying your freshman year because I um, had a B freshman year and so it brought down my GPA and I, I wish that I knew how much it impacted my GPA and um, what I was able to send to different colleges. I would mostly have to say that, you know, coming into high school it can be pretty scary going from middle school because, you know, you're at the top of, you know, the rank and then you're going right back down to the bottom. Um, so for some people it can be kind of a scary thing, but like Elizabeth said, getting involved, um, something that will seriously help you out a lot throughout high school. Don't take anything for granted. You don't know when it's going to end, so just let it, everything sink in, have fun, enjoy high school, because it was amazing. I would say uh, to a freshman to get involved in school, because I think by getting involved, you're going to make you know, the best relationships you can. That'll last all four years. To not be scared, because I feel like I was really nervous coming into high school, and it's not as intimidating as you would think it is. I would definitely join um, some clubs, because that's how you make friends. Be friends with the coaches and teachers, because they're going to really help you get through this time. 
Don't take your years at Central for granted. They're the best years ever. Definitely participate in clubs and activities. Woo! My <laughs> advice yep. is freshman year is the most important year for your GPA, so you need to and grind then. it out freshman year, <laughs> grind it out sophomore year so you can have a laid back junior and senior year. That's my advice. Always make the most of it and always just hang out with your friends and just remember to have fun. And work hard. Focus on yourself and also be be cognizant that you are in a community and that it's that you're not just a participant, you're not just a person, you're not just a student of the school, but you're also an ambassador of Central. The people here are very helpful and the teachers are really nice. So you have an amazing time and honestly it's one of the safest, best campuses you'll ever be on. I've really had a good time being here and I felt safe all the time, so it was really good. Relax, be yourself. It, every, everybody's, everybody's stressed out on something. You probably have something in common with a senior. So just chill out, be yourself, it's all gonna be okay. Day one, walk in with a sense of purpose and know what you want and just keep going for it. Don't lose sight of that, not even in your first year. It took me a time to figure out what I really wanted and what I wanted to make of myself in high school. And I think I could have done a lot more had I just gotten to know myself better a little bit sooner. Get your work on time and don't be late to class. Unfortunately, high school isn't high school the musical, the series. I'm sorry, it's just not that way. <laughs> you have four years to figure yourself out and take advantage of that. You don't need to be someone concrete all four years. This is your opportunity to discover, I know it sounds cheesy, but it's your four years to discover yourself before you go off to college, maybe the first time you're separated from your family. So take advantage of these four years. I would tell an incoming freshman to try a lot of things, try a lot of sports, try a lot of clubs, because, um, you know, the, your high school experience truly starts when you found your thing. And um, the earlier on you can find your thing, the better. I've known a lot of people and impacted a lot of people in high school. And since we're living in this time of like uncertainty, um, I think it's good coming out of this um, for the incoming freshmen to just take every chance that they have. Do your homework. <laughs> uh, get your work done on time. I would say be your best self you can be. Don't try to be someone that you're not. Don't try to pretend to fit into somewhere that you don't belong. You are perfect the way you are, and just being yourself is going to make you fit in. Like just be nice to everybody. If you're just nice and you smile to everybody else, and including your teachers, I mean, it'll be easy to make friends, and, and friends make high school way more fun. So, Well, as promised, we are both thrilled and honored today to have the man with us that has been leading us through this whole coronavirus, and that is Dr. Jeff Bearden, the superintendent of Forsyth County Schools. Dr. Bearden, thanks so much for joining us today. Mr. Young, my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. So the first question we got to get out of the right, just right out of the gate here with you is: We see you up there. You got your nice button down on. You're looking sharp. The real question is: Are you wearing shorts or you got the dress slacks to go with it? <laughs> Actually, wearing I'm wearing jeans today. Uh, working working from my home office this afternoon. Throughout this crazy virus season, there's been some good things that we've seen happen. Can you can can you talk about some of the good stuff you've seen come out of this? Yeah, sure. I mean, there are several things come to mind. Number one, I think the spirit of collaboration is probably at an all-time high uh, in our school system. You know, folks who typically do not work together just by the nature of their jobs, you know, were forced to work together in this situation. And any time that you do that, there's an opportunity to learn from one another. And so I think you know, people getting out of their comfort zone. You know, I know for a lot of our teachers, um, teaching virtually was something they probably never aspired to do. And then they were they were forced into doing it. And, and because of that, you know, it, it put them in a situation where they had to uh, learn some new tools and, and, and have new tools in their toolbox. And I've heard from a number of teachers who have said, you know what, um, I didn't want this to happen, but at the end of the day, I think I'm going to be a better teacher. I think I think I'm going to have uh, more resources at my disposal than I ever did before. So you know that spirit of collaboration, 
of people stretching, you know, their, their own learning, uh, I think has been a positive. I think the, um, the emphasis on relationships. Now, I've heard this, you know, repeatedly as well, and I think you have too, Mr. Young, and, and that is uh, while we have been physically apart, I've heard a lot of people say they felt like they have never uh, been more connected with, with their colleagues, with their students, uh, although we're in a virtual environment. It's really um, helped uh, make the relationship piece even stronger. Um, which is something, you know, we would have never even thought of when this started out. Right. Um, I, you know, I think there's been, you know, a lot of positives. You know, one of my favorite quotes, and you know how I like to use quotes and use them all the time, is, you know, challenges create opportunities. And this was a challenge. I mean, this was a major, major challenge for all of us. But it did create some opportunities. And I think we all learned from it. And, and then I think about our students, you know, our students, you know, many of them will go to college and, and, and when they're in college, they will probably take some online courses and, and having not had that experience before, uh, this will, this will have been good for them to help them prepare because it's a different way to learn. And then someday a lot of them will probably have the opportunity to, to work remotely, maybe work from their home. And so they were able to kind of put their toe in the water a little bit to see what that's like. And I think in the long run, that will be beneficial as well. One of the things that we have appreciated about your leadership has been the transparency, the, the weekly updates, three days a week, so that we all stay in touch. Um, and I'm not sure that, that everybody out there realizes that. And, and so we're grateful. We're grateful for how you've led us through this, through this crisis. And we know this is phase one. Phase two is now getting ready to open up for next year. And I, and I think there's probably a lot of folks out there, impatient, even parents out there, that want to know what's the plan for next year. Talk a little bit about why we are, and you are so patient in letting those plans develop before you put them out there. Right. You know, and as you know, and I, and I think anybody who follows the news on a daily basis knows you know, that, that data changes every single day. New information comes out every day. We know some of the brightest minds all over the world are working collaboratively and feverishly to create medicines that will help mitigate this virus and eventually a vaccine that will help end this virus. And so it's hard to put a timetable on that. We're a couple months away from school starting uh, and a lot of things can happen in that very short period of time. I will say, as we sit here today, the data in Georgia is trending pretty positively right now. Uh, our governor announced yesterday that we have fewer hospitalizations in our state as of right now than we have had uh, in several weeks. So that's trending in the right direction. The other comment he made was the percentage of, of, of citizens testing positive for the virus, the percentage, that's going down. And I know our governor is using those two uh, benchmarks as he makes decisions on uh, how the state can continue to reopen. And so for me, you know, as a superintendent, I think the worst mistake I could make is to make a recommendation to our board on how schools should open in August without having the latest information. And, and it's challenging because, you know, for you as a building principal and all your colleagues, you need to know as soon as possible because you have to plan, you know, the, the school day for your students. And that's a big job. I mean, the average person probably has no idea, especially at a high school level, what it takes to schedule classes for 25, 2,600 students. It's a monumental task. And it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of expertise. And so, you know, I'm trying to balance, you know, making the right decision based on data with also making it in a timely enough manner so that our schools can meet the needs of our students. So, you know, having said all that, uh, we have a survey out right now to our public. That survey is available till June 1st. That will help guide our decision-making, it's very important for us to hear from our parents, 
to hear from our students, to hear from our staff in terms of what they're thinking, really what's their comfort level as we sit here in the latter part of May. I think we all know that comfort level could change in four to five weeks. So we might ask that question again, the middle latter part of June. But I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that we will be able to start school on time in August. I can't tell you exactly right now what that will look like. I want it to be as close to normal as possible. I think we all realize students, staff, parents, we all need routine. We all need to know, you know what our day is going to be like so we can schedule our lives around that. And so I hope it's as normal as possible, but there's no doubt we are going to have an increase in our, uh, how we clean our buildings, how often we clean our buses. We're going to have an uh, increase on uh, how often we mandate that students and staff are doing little things like washing their hands. We're going to make sure that we limit the number of visitors into our schools to limit the amount of exposure to our students and staff. Uh, there's no doubt we will limit the amount of times we congregate students to staff uh, all together in, in, in smaller spaces. You know, we'll, we'll be cognizant of the need to spread out as much as possible, and we certainly will make an announcement as soon as we feel like we've got the data we need to make that announcement public. Would you be able to say we got better through this? I, I think, honestly, uh, anybody who would assess this no matter what your role is in our school system, you know, teacher, principal, or, or, or my job, um, yes, we were forced to get better. Um, and it was painful at times. Um, anybody who thinks working or learning virtually is easier than working or learning face-to-face, -face, uh, they've never really gone through the experience. Uh, this has been exhausting for all of us. Um, and it has been, you know, at times, not only challenging, but stressful as well. You know, we're all dealing with the anxiety of the, of the health of our, of our families and, uh, and extended families and, and friends. And, you know, you watch this on a daily basis and, you know, it can't help but uh, cause some angst in your life. But I just cannot tell you uh, I can't even put into words how proud I am of our school system and our community and again how well we work together. So we're always striving to get better, but, but to answer your question, I feel like we did a really good job. I know I've heard you talk several times, Mr. Young, I know how proud you are of the teachers at Precise Central, how proud you are of the students and, and the parents who help facilitate learning. And rightfully so, but I think all of your principal colleagues would would echo the same sentiment. I think everybody's very, very proud of how well their teachers perform, how much their students remain engaged, and how much we appreciate parents helping facilitate the process because we know this was challenging for them as well. And I'm so proud of you and, and your colleagues, how you stepped up to the plate and said, you know what, if we can deliver for the class of 20, but if we can deliver a prom, if we can deliver graduation, if we can have some senior activities to make sure this is a memorable, memorable experience for our students, we're gonna do whatever it takes. And boy, you guys stepped up to the plate and I hope conditions will allow us to follow through with those plans and give our seniors what they deserve because you know this class um, you know, has been incredibly resilient you, they have persevered through something no other class has been asked to persevere through. They're going to be better for it in the long run. Uh, they're going to be the ones leading our country someday, and this experience will make them better leaders. Uh, hopefully, will make them better global citizens as well. And I know I speak for you and all of our principals in Forsyth County Schools when I say I'm incredibly proud class of 20 and congratulations to all of you. Well Dr. Bearden we really appreciate all the time you've given us today. Uh, we know you're, you're a very busy man but we know all of our viewers are, are uh, honored and grateful to have you here so thanks so much 
and uh, have a great rest of the week. Thanks, Mr. Young. Appreciate the opportunity. As Dr. Bearden just mentioned, we do have a lot of good stuff still to come up for seniors. So, if you haven't seen it on social media or haven't seen it on this show, now's the time. Pull out your camera and take a picture of this next slide, which outlines all the great stuff that still is yet to come for our seniors, the class of 2020, in the Sea House this year. We also don't want you to forget that there's still two big virtual events that are taking place. Senior Scholarship Night, we're hoping we'll be able to pull that off for May 24th. And then, of course, those of you that are not going to graduate with us at the ceremony in Gwinnett will be a part of the virtual graduation on May 26th. It's hard to believe that 10 full weeks, more than 45 school days, has gone by since we started this little experiment. We've all grown a lot during this time period. As you heard Dr. Bearden say earlier today, this has been a time of tremendous growth for both teachers and students. And as your principal, I've grown a lot too. I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am for the leadership of folks like Dr. Bearden, for all of our administrators here, our, our assistant principals and administrative assistants, to our secretaries and counselors, and of course, I cannot thank enough, I'll never be able to thank enough, the great job that our teachers have done throughout this crisis. But most importantly, and you've heard me say it before, all of this worked out as well as it did because the perseverance, hard work, support, love, and care, and dedication that the families of the Sea House have out there. Thank you guys. God bless you. We wish you a very safe and healthy summer. At some point, we're going to be able to travel and get out there, and we're going to have a great time this summer. But even over the summer, when we're having a great time and we're celebrating that we've made it through this, we're going to do so without the drugs and alcohol. We're going to call or text when we get where we're going. And remember, even in the summer months, after a pandemic, when we have so much to celebrate, nothing good happens after midnight. We love you guys so much. We cannot wait to see you this fall. Go dogs! Have a great summer. Arr! Thank you.